It's that time again. Christmas is over, the tree is still up because it's such a pain to take down, and we get to settle in with the video game Santa brought us. Recently, I streamed some very festive titles, and we're gonna take a look at how that went. Get out the last couple Christmas cookies and drink that milk because I'm trying to get rid of it. We're gonna see if these holiday tie-in games are naughty or nice. First up is a game loosely based on my favorite Christmas movie of all time, Home Alone for the Super Nintendo. This game features Kevin, the Wet Bandits, and the guy from the Godfather's Pizza commercials You want a big cookie combo, call me. as they wander around the biggest house in the world while you try to secure the McAllister family's candelabras, sacks of money, and massive emerald encrusted circlets. You can also gather slices of pizza just left lying around, presumably where Buzz barfed them all up, for an indiscernible reason. I think it's to get an extra life, but I never did find the last slice to know for sure. You see, both the pizza slices and the items you are required to collect for progression are often invisible and require you to touch a secret part of the screen to make them appear. If that weren't enough, sometimes they require you to figure out a mechanic that is never used anywhere else. Remember that part of the movie where Kevin has to stomp on the ground to shake a ring crafted for a giant to the end of a table? What do you mean you don't? There was at least a table in the movie, and that's close enough. For some reason, you cannot jump onto this table, despite it looking like any other table you can use as a platform, and are forced to just throw a personal temper tantrum in place. As far as I know, this never comes up again. Baffling. Once you've collected enough pieces of pirate treasure, you can drop them down a laundry chute into a rat and bat infested basement that you are forced to painstakingly traverse until you can lock everything in a safe. I guess the McAllisters live over a secret Rum Runner's cave or something. You know, just like in the movie, complete with that amazing John Williams soundtrack. Once you've done this, you do it all over again, but this time gathering toys instead of loot because of that one line where Marv mentions toys in the movie. Much like the aforementioned table, I guess that's some tie to the film? Unlike the rats, bats, and generic mafia goons who just stand in place and let you soak them with a water pistol. Yes, Kevin comes equipped with a squirt gun instead of his signature BB gun. You don't even set up or use any traps outside of a few that are already in place for you. It's clear this game was just a pathetic cash grab trying to cat burgle a few bucks from clueless parents. My review? I wouldn't play this game if it was growing out of my Super Nintendo! Next title. It's Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas, The Pumpkin King for Game Boy Advance. What a mouthful. It's also a marginally decent, but generally boring Metroidvania with some surprisingly good animations for a licensed game. Were you expecting that? I sure wasn't. I also wasn't expecting it to be a prequel to the events of the movie it's based on. As such, it's not even a Christmas title, so I'm not gonna waste my time. Not Take it away! To the Jingle Jail with a non-believer! Moving right along, it's time we got back to Christmas. Also on the Game Boy Advance, it's the Santa Claus 3, the Escape Clause. If you're looking for timeless Christmas magic with Tim Allen and Martin Short, you're going to sadly find it contained entirely within screenshots from the movie with a brief, marginally accurate summary of the events. And I mean brief. Like, they don't even take the time to explain who Bud and Sylvia are, they just tell you that they're coming to the North Pole. Is that a good thing? An ominous prophecy? It doesn't matter. You know what? If you don't know, I'm not gonna tell you either. All I'm gonna tell you is that someone was told to program a game about Santa Claus, and they sure did something to that effect. I don't know how familiar you are with the third Santa Claus movie, but I can tell you that it mainly revolves around Scott Calvin's ever-growing stress of balancing work life with home life, while Martin Short's Jack Frost minces about being a general nuisance. As such, in this game, you collect milk and cookies, attack snowmen with a jack-in-the-box, and use toy tanks to blow up ice walls. Well, kids, I, I certainly hope you've been good this year, because it looks like Santa just took out the Pearson home! It's coming! Your playable Santa is also the least convincing Tim Allen I've ever heard. No, no. If you're gonna grunt, grunt like this. Uh? The gameplay is monotonous, the controls are abysmal, and I have no idea how to make this jump. My verdict? Worse than Chet the Reindeer. <laughs> Disgusting. Last and definitively least without a doubt in my mind 
is Dr. Seuss's The Grinch Stole Christmas on Nintendo DS. You'll note it's not how the Grinch stole Christmas. We are no longer concerned with how he did it. Now he's just on trial for his evident crimes and will rightfully be prosecuted. This game is an absolute chore to play with clunky controls, a single button that does anything at all, and a house full of who's that could not care less that you're robbing them blind unless you happen to stumble into them. That might make it sound easy, but getting up and down stairs in this game takes finesse befitting a ballet dancer performing surgery. By pressing your single button, you can swipe anything the game considers worth plundering, such as garland on the walls, logs in the fireplace, or the light bulbs from the chandeliers. That last one sure is something, considering you need 100% completion and there is no visual or auditory indication you are near an item to pilfer. Just smash the button and trust the Grinch implicitly. I'm sure no harm can come of that. Touching a Who will cause a whistle to sound and remove one of three chances. That is, unless you touched a sleepwalking Who. This will start a minigame where clones of that Who will zip across the screen, attempting to run you down Frogger style. Avoiding them long enough will prevent you from losing a try and let you keep stealing Christmas to your heart's content. That is, of course, the worst possible outcome because this game is decidedly not pudding. It's terrible. I was physically unable to play it for more than 10 minutes. There is no incentive to continue. Your only reward for succeeding is more of the same terrible game and some unsettlingly sensual depictions of Dr. Seuss's green monster. There's nothing else of interest here and there's nothing else to say. It's just bad, and beyond the decision to commission a furry artist to draw the Grinch, this game does nothing of note. The game is just... nothing. If you're going to play any of the games I've mentioned here, just make sure it isn't this one. The Grinch could have just left this game under the Who's trees instead of stealing everything if he really wanted to make them all cry boo-hoo. Final judgment. Free Decker sauerkraut and toadstool sandwich with arsenic sauce. Dump it to crump it. So is that it? Did corporate greed truly destroy Christmas? Isn't there anyone who can save us this time next holiday season? That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. Don't you be on the naughty list. Like, subscribe, and go follow my stream. Maybe I'll play something better than these appalling dump heaps. So until next time, take it easy.